Hello everyone, welcome back to the mechanical vibrations tutorial. Today we are going to finish the topic of harmonically excited vibration of single degree of freedom systems. And the last topic that we are going to discuss today is the vibration under rotating unbalance. So let's begin. So as usual, let's have a quick review on the topic that we are going to discuss today, which is the vibration under rotating unbalance. As you may know, rotating on balance is one of the main cause of vibrations in many systems, especially when we deal with rotation. From rotating engines, such as HVAC fans, washing machine, and many other applications, you can see the vibration because the mass is not 100% balanced over the rotation point. That's why you get the vibration. Sometimes it is uh, harmful for the system, but sometimes you intentionally add unbalance in the system to cause vibration. One example is the joysticks, where you can see there is a tiny motor with an unbalanced mass, which is rotating and causes vibration during the gaming, right? Let's start with a simple case. So imagine we have a mass of M, we show it with a capital M, which is rested on a suspension system with a damping of C, and a stiffness of K. So this is the system and there is a rotating mass, say for example here, with a distance of E, which is called as the eccentricity and the mass of this tiny unbalance is little m. So we normally use m, little m for the eccentric mass or for the unbalance and capital M for the main system. So imagine at some the speed of rotation for example omega the system is rotating like this and actually by system i mean the unbalanced mass is rotating around a point of o so let's look at the system and see how it causes vibration if i draw the eccentric mass in a separate side and look at this so imagine this mass of m is rotating with the angle of uh, angular velocity of omega and this is theta the rotation angle at each point around O so there is a centrifugal force because of this rotation if I rewrite it and show how it works so this is mass M and there is a centrifugal force in the opposite direction which has two components one component in the X direction which is not our concern for vibration vertically if X is our direction of vibration so we have a Y component which causes vibration so this angle is theta and this one is theta as well so we have say for example F and this component is F sine theta right and F goes theta in here so as you see the Y component causes vibration because it is a function of omega t in fact theta is equal to omega t so the force applied to the system is something like that which is equal to f sine omega t but what is f f can be found from dynamics which is equal to the centrifugal force so f is m e omega square i'm sure you can remember that from dynamics right how to find the centrifugal force. The centrifugal force is the multiplication of the mass times the centrifugal acceleration, which is E omega squared. And E is the eccentricity or the distance. So if we look at this system to find the equation of motion, it's pretty simple. It's equal to M, capital M, X double dot, plus C, X dot, plus K, X, equal to the applied force which is equal to m e omega squared sine omega t for this topic you need to recall something from the vibrations like centrifugal force and acceleration and also other components like how to find the direction of force in y and x direction right so this is sine omega t so as you see the equation of motion is very similar to the case that you have a harmonic 
excitation. The only difference is basically the amplitude of the force. The rest of the solution is pretty simple. So again, remember, omega is the frequency of rotation. So rotation of the unbalanced, right? Balanced, which is M here, right? So remember that because we need that in the future for the examples, okay? So for this system, again, we have a sort of damped system, which means that we do care about the particular solution or the steady state response. So the steady state response is important from this system, right? Why? Because the transient response will go away because of the damping as we had before, right? So XP, which is the particular solution for the equation of motion and the steady state response of the system. So steady state response of the system is equal to X sine omega T minus phi, where X is the amplitude, and phi is the phase and omega is the frequency of the force, which is actually the frequency of the rotation for the unbalance, right? This is very similar to the harmonically excited vibration that we had before and x would be equal to the force amplitude m e omega squared divided by k minus m omega squared squared plus c omega squared so this is omega to the power of half right I'm sure that you can remember this from before so this is actually a square bracket so I'm gonna change it to that that's it right and what is Phi Phi is the phase which is equal to tan inverse of C Omega divided by K minus M Omega squared so for this system we can also have the representation based on Zeta and r right the damping ratio and the frequency ratio but one important representation for this case is based on the ratio between m x and little m e m e is the eccentricity or the unbalanced components in many problems instead of m and e separately that's the multiplication of m e is given so keep it in mind sometimes m e is given rather than M and E separately. So this ratio is also important for this system and we can use the R zeta representation for example which is equal to R squared divided by 1 minus R squared squared plus 2 zeta R squared to the power of half. We could also have it as a function of C, K and omega and M but we can also use this one. So phi could also be written as the tan inverse of, so let me write it again, is the tan inverse of two zeta r divided by one minus r squared, right? So zeta is c over c critical and r is the frequency ratio as we had before so keep it in mind in many examples we need to deal with this formula which is the ratio between the main system mass times the main system vibration amplitude divided by the unbalanced parameter which is me right again in some examples the value of me given rather than m and e separately okay so let's go to the example we have today and you will see how we can basically solve for these systems. Okay, so let's go over this problem and see how we can use the formula I showed before for solving this case. Let's go over the problem. We have a variable speed electric motor, which is shown by capital M here, having an unbalance, which is the little m, which is mounted on an isolator. As you see, the isolator has the C and K components here. As the speed of the motor is increased from zero, the amplitude of vibration of the motor 
are observed to be 0.55 inches at resonance and 0.15 inch beyond resonance. We have to discuss these two cases separately and in details. So the problem is asking to find the damping ratio, which is zeta for this case. So as you can see in these examples, there are very few information given. Only the amplitude at two conditions and asking for the damping ratio. We don't know M, we don't know C, we don't know K and Omega. So how can we basically deal with that? So first of all, let's look at the formula that we have based on R and zeta. If we go back to that formula, we have M X divided by M E is equal to R squared divided by one minus R squared squared plus two zeta R squared to the power of half. So that's what we need to use here. So two conditions are given, the resonance condition. So for resonance, let's call x1 equal to 0.55 inches for resonance. And we have x2 equal to 0.15 inches at beyond resonance or beyond resonance. So let's look at these two expressions or these two conditions for this system. So for the resonance condition, which we have basically X1, so say for example, case one, so which we have resonance, we have X1, right, equal to point, five five inches right so what is resonance so the resonance is the case that omega is equal to omega n so the natural frequency of the system is equal to the excitation frequency so this gives us r equal to one right we know that because the ratio of the frequency is equal to one so if we rewrite the equation we have we get m x1 divided by me is equal to r squared divided by 1 minus r squared squared plus 2 zeta r squared to the power of half. So what happens if we plug in r equal to 1 into this equation? So in the numerator we get 1, this component would be 0. And this one is just 2 zeta squared, which gives us 2 zeta squared to the power of half, which is 1 over 2 zeta, right? That's it. So for m x1 over m e equal to 1 to zeta. So keep that in mind for the first case, right? So now let's go to the case two which is the beyond resonance case so say for example case two which is beyond resonance so for beyond resonance it means that omega is much larger than omega n which means that r which is equal to omega over omega n is a pretty large number so we can assume that r goes to infinity or to a huge number. I'm just defining it to take the limit of the fraction. So what we have here for m x2 over m e, it is equal to the limit of the fraction. We have r squared 1 minus r squared squared plus 2 zeta r squared to the power of half where r goes to infinity again for the beyond resonance we can suppose that r is very large because omega is much larger than omega n right so if we want to find the, the 
limit of this fraction you just need to recall the contents from the calculus or you can review our videos on the calculus in this channel right so simply to do this for the numerator we, we keep the largest power of the expression which is r squared from the denominator we have to do the same thing so if we expand this we get r to the power of 4 which means that we also have a half power here which gives us the limit of r goes to infinity r squared r squared right again you need to review your calculus contents so this one gives us one right so in fact for case two we have m x2 over m e equal to one and this is just an approximation right so let's put the two expressions we found together and see what we have here so for case one we got basically m x1 over m e equal to 1 over 2 zeta and for case 2 we got m x2 m e equal to 1 and what we're looking for is zeta so how can we find zeta here right the damping ratio so let's look at these two equations and see how we can simplify it as you can see we have so many unknowns the capital m the little m and e so why not we take this as a constant for both cases right because they won't change both m and m e are constant for both cases so i'm gonna i'm gonna define a new variable say for example or a constant basically m over m e is equal to say for example c1 so what we have here we have c1 x1 is equal to so sorry for my writing i have to fix that again so again we have c1 x1 equal to 1 over 2 zeta and c1 x2 is equal to 1 i just plugged in c1 in the two equations we have here right so this goes there and now we can simply find zeta from these two expressions so if we can simply divide them together knowing that c1 are equal so we get basically x1 over x2 is equal to 1 over 2 zeta right and we know the values for x1 and x2 and we don't need to convert them into a metric system here because it's just a ratio or a fraction between each other but in other calculations we may need to basically find that based on the metric or si system right so what we get here we have 0 0.55 divided by 0 0.15 equal to 1 over 2 zeta right and if you want to find zeta you can simply use cross multiplication and calculate zeta equal to 0 0.13 and you know zeta has no unit right so in fact we could simply find the value for the damping ratio for this system without knowing the mass stiffness and also the damping value or the damping constant we even don't know me the components for the unbalanced part or the rotating unbalanced or eccentric mass right so we learned how to use this mx divided by me ratio for these systems i hope you learn the topic of rotating on balance which causes vibration and stay tuned for the next video